calcaneal fractures, extraarticular fractures. Calcaneal fractures can be extraarticular fractures or intraarticular fractures. In this video, we're going to talk about the most common types of extraarticular fractures. If we talk about the extraarticular fractures, it can be anterior process fracture, which is frequently missed and misdiagnosed as an ankle sprain. It results from forced plantar flexion and inversion. Treatment is usually conservative. Surgery is done for displaced large fragments. Another extraarticular fracture is the tuberosity body fracture, which results from an axial load injury. CT scan may be needed to roll out intraarticular extension. Tuberosity avulsion fracture. It is an important extraarticular fracture. The injury is usually due to sudden dorsiflexion of the gastrocnemius and soleus muscles, which pulls the Achilles tendon upwards, causing an avulsion fracture of the calcaneus. This injury may cause skin compromise at the back of the heel. There might be some predisposing factors, such as diabetes and osteoporosis. There might be several types, such as a sleeve type or tuberosity fracture. Another type is the beak type avulsion fracture. The third type called infrabursal avulsion fracture, and that is rare. Most calcaneal fractures are closed injuries that are treated non-operatively or with surgery when the fracture is intraarticular and the fracture is displaced. The timing of surgery is usually after improvement of the soft tissue condition. Avulsion fractures are different. They require urgent care for reduction and fixation of the fracture. This will eliminate the risk of skin complications and restore the function of the Achilles tendon. Sustentacular fracture results from heel loading accompanied by forced inversion of the foot. Surgery is rarely needed. It must be noted that the flexor hallucis longus lodge underneath the sustentaculum. Another extraarticular fracture of the calcaneus is the stress fracture. The stress fracture of the calcaneus is typically felt deep in the bone and it produces a vague complaint of heel pain. Stress fractures of the calcaneus are typically seen in athletes who are overtraining or using improper shoe wear or those with mechanical abnormalities. The pain from a stress fracture appears suddenly and remains constant. Pain and the swelling on both sides of the heel may be seen and felt. The pain associated with a calcaneal stress fracture can usually be reproduced by squeezing the heel from both sides. Pain from calcaneal stress fracture can be confused with the pain from plantar fasciitis. The pain from plantar fasciitis is most severe in the morning and when the patient first stands on their feet. Imaging tests may be helpful to confirm diagnosis of stress fracture of the calcaneus. The fracture may be difficult to be seen on x-rays until the fracture begins to heal. The x-rays are usually negative. X-rays at 4 to 6 weeks will show fracture line on the posterior aspect of the calcaneus as a radio-dense vertical line, and it is extraarticular. The fracture is best seen on a lateral x-ray of the foot.
MRI is usually helpful in the diagnosis if the clinical picture is not clear. Treatment usually conservative. Avoid activities such as running and jumping. Use proper shoe wear to cushion the heel. Non-weight bearing for six weeks utilizing a boot or a cast. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.